now that we are clear about the main features of type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. Let's study the underlying mechanisms of these reactions. All hypersensitivity reactions have two stages of development. These are the sensitization stage and the effector stage. Sensitization stage refers to the first encounter of the individual to the antigen. It is the primary immune response to an antigen that sensitizes the individual. Effector stage is the secondary immune response that occurs upon a second or subsequent exposure to the same antigen. In hypersensitivity reactions, this secondary immune response causes damage to the host. Suppose an individual encounters the allergen for the first time. So, here we are talking about sensitization stage. Now, allergens may get entering the body by inhalation, ingestion or injection. Let's say, ragweed pollens are inhaled by an individual. Once an allergen enters the body, it is taken up by antigen-presenting cells such as dendritic cells. Dendritic cells process these antigens and display them as peptide MHC complex on their surface. They migrate to nearby lymph nodes. Within lymph node they present these antigens to naive T helper cells. Naive T helper cells get activated and they differentiate into T helper type 2 cells. In the lymph node, naive allergen specific B cells are also activated by allergens. They proliferate and differentiate into antibody secreting plasma cells. Now, these allergen activated B cells and T helper type 2 cells migrate to the target site into which the allergen first entered. They work together to eliminate the antigen. The helper T type 2 cell starts secreting large amounts of cytokines. Most important of these cytokines are interleukin-4, interleukin-5 and interleukin-13. These cytokines result in isotopic switching of activated B cells. As a result, these B cells start production and secretion of IgE antibodies. Some of these IgE antibodies bind to the allergen. We know that mast cells are widely distributed in tissues. They can be found residing near blood vessels, nerves, and in subepithelial locations. Important point about mast cells is that they express high affinity receptors for the FC portion of the epsilon heavy chain of IgE antibodies. These receptors are designated as F epsilon R1. During the primary immune response, the free IgE antibodies bind to the FC receptors of these mast cells. Like mast cells, basophils which are circulating in the blood, also have FC receptors for IgE antibodies. Excess of the IgE antibodies that enter the circulation, bind to these receptors on basophils. These IgE antibodies may also reach other distant tissues and, bind to mast cells present over there. Thus, mast cells and basophils are sensitized during primary response to the allergen. In the absence of allergen these IgE bound cells can remain in the body for few months. Thus, in the sensitization stage of type 1 hypersensitivity reactions, mast cells and basophils become sensitized to the allergen. They are now ready for the next stage. Now suppose, the same allergen which resulted in the sensitization of mast cells and basophils, is encountered by the individual for the second time. Let's say, the same allergen re-enters the body and, 
At the time of entry the allergen-specific IgE-bound mast cells and basophils are present in the body. What will happen now? The next stage on the subsequent encounter of the allergen is known as, the effector stage. Allergens bind to the already present allergen-specific IgE antibodies that are bound to mast cells in the tissues. In doing so, allergen results in cross-linking of IgE antibodies and consequently cross-link the FC receptors associated with them. This cross-linking of FC receptors results in the activation and degranulation of mast cells. Degranulation of mast cells results in the release of preformed or primary mediators that are stored in intracellular granules of mast cells. Most important of these mediators are histamine. Histamine is released within seconds or minutes of activation. Histamine causes vasodilation. Vasodilation means, the diameter of blood vessels increases. This increases the blood flow to the local area. Histamine also results in increased vascular permeability. As a result, the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels contracts and, the space created allows cells and plasma proteins to leak out of the circulation into the tissue. Histamine also results in smooth muscle contraction and, increased secretion of the mucus. Other rapidly released mediators include chemotactic factors for neutrophils and, eosinophils. New mediators are also generated by the breakdown of mast cells. These are secondary mediators that include prostaglandins and, leukotrienes. Secondary mediators sustain the allergic response for several hours. All these events constitute the early phase reactions of effector stage which are mainly, immediate responses. Mast cells also synthesize and release cytokines and chemokines. They play important role in the late phase reactions. Late phase reactions are characterized by the accumulation of neutrophils, eosinophils and, macrophages. Leukocytes such as, sensitized basophils, eosinophils, macrophages, and neutrophils are present in circulation. These cells now start migrating to the site, where allergen is present. This happens in response to chemotactic factors released at the site during early phase reaction. These leukocytes get activated and carry out destructive effector functions. Their activation is due to the cytokines secreted by activated T helper type 2 cells, mast cells and present at the site. The sensitized basophils degranulate on binding to allergens. They release inflammatory mediators like mast cells. They also secrete large quantities of interleukin-4 and interleukin-13. During this late phase reaction, the leukocytes now accumulated at the site release more cytokines, leukotrienes, enzymes etc. These are responsible for clinical damage to the tissue. In the late phase reaction eosinophils play important role. This is because, eosinophils have FC receptors for IgA, IgG and, IgE antibodies. When eosinophils get activated they release inflammatory mediators such as leukotrienes, platelet activating factor, interleukin-4, interleukin-10, major basic protein, eosinophil derived neurotoxin and, eosinophilic cationic protein. They also activate macrophages and neutrophils. All these mediators and activated cells cause more tissue destruction. So, in this video lecture, we understood that, type 1 hypersensitivity reactions develop in two stages. 
In the sensitization stage, IgE antibodies are produced on first exposure to the allergen. These antibodies then bind to FC receptors of mast cells and basophils. In the effector stage, when the same allergen is encountered again by the body, the sensitized mast cells and basophils degranulate and, the mediators released cause tissue damage. That's all in today's video lecture. If these videos are helpful to you please don't forget to press the like button. Comment below to share your honest opinions about these videos. If you are new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.